Hey, what's up guys? We'll see 69 here back at you. Welcome to the channel. Uh, today we're gonna do something a little different. We're going to swap the motor in our old furnace. Um, it's a project that I've been wanting to do for quite some time, probably about you know four or five years. Uh, it's got one of those computer controlled uh, ECM motors, you know, really fancy and expensive. Anyway, I just kind of want to get that thing out of there because the last time that thing went out on me, it was like 900 bucks, you know, for the guy to come in and change it. And that's getting a deal because at the time I was running a restaurant and I knew those guys and, you know, it just kind of hooked me up. Anywho, uh, we're going to be a little proactive instead of reactive. I want to swap this thing out because, like, you know, it's been about 10 years. So it's probably getting close to the time where it will expire on me. So uh, I picked up a kit from uh, SupplyHouse.com, which, uh, honestly, I've only ordered from those guys a couple of times. Really great shipping. Uh, pretty good prices. So I'll show you what I got. Picked up this motor. It's a U.S. motor. Uh, it's one horsepower, 120 volt. And then I got a capacitor for it, it's like 20 microfarad, which this brand here, it's actually American made, so that's kind of nice. Then I picked up this uh, Quick Swap V3, it's supposed to uh, replace all these different types of motors right here with a permanent split capacitor. So this should work out pretty nice. Really just kind of plug and play, just take the old plugs and plug it in this new board. Which is the reason why I bought that, because I don't want to sit down here and try to rewire America or any of that kind of crap. I just kind of want to get it in, get out, you know, and, and be done with it. Now, there's a bunch of different ways you guys can do this. Like, you can use, like, fan relays. You could, uh, you can change out your furnace board. You can do all kinds of different crap. This board is a little expensive, but I, I think you're paying for the convenience on this, because I shouldn't have to, like, you know be down here all day, you know, trying to repin and shit. Now, this board I bought, I know it's it's, it's a little pricey. Um, it was 300 bucks. I think I paid $600 for everything, the motor, the capacitor, and the board. Um, but I think you're really just kind of paying for the convenience of it. It's still cheaper than buying another ECM motor because that motor is already a few years old. It's discontinued. I'd have to buy a new module and a new motor to go along with it. Pretty sure anyway. And uh, it, it would still end up being more. So this way, I know this motor is probably going to last forever, longer than the furnace. Uh, the furnace, I'm probably going to change out in a few years anyway. So I'm really just kind of doing this for peace of mind because I know this thing, if it's going to go out, it's going to go out in the dead of winter, probably middle of February. February in Illinois sucks. So, and I just don't want to have a thousand dollar bill, you know, from some... Havac Tech, which will probably suck anyway, because I you know, they're hard to find a uh, good trusted worthy one. So let's get this project on the way. Shouldn't take too long. Hopefully it'll be nice and simple, and I'll take you guys along for a ride. All right, guys, so I already got uh, the furnace doors off. I uh, went ahead and unplugged the 16 pin connector. The other connectors are back on the motor itself. Uh, really what I got to do is just kind of remove this box, kind of put it out of the way, and then we'll pull this whole uh, squirrel cage out. Okay guys, got the old motor out. That was pretty easy. Probably like maybe five, ten minutes all it took. Just kind of took the control board, kind of moved it off on the side, and it's really just a couple plugs from there. Uh, anyway, it looks like we just got to undo these four bolts here, and there should be another nut on the other side of this for the actual blower, uh, the squirrel cage anyway. And then that should just slide right out and then we can get the new one in. Hey guys, I got the frame off the old motor, got on a new motor. Uh, all I gotta do now is just put it back in and wire up the new board and we'll be good to go. This only took a few minutes, but we got our new motor mounted back in our squirrel cage. Really the only thing I had to do was uh, change out these uh, these wires here, just had to swap them for clockwise rotation. The motor came with a uh, counterclockwise. So yeah, guys, this is not hard at all. This is uh, pretty easy. I'm spending the majority of my time actually running up and down the stairs, going out to the garage, you know, getting a different tool here and there. But uh, other than that, things are going really smooth. I'm gonna mount this motor in, I'm gonna put in that new board, and then uh, we're 
fire this puppy up. All right, guys, it's been a couple hours. I got a new motor in, got the quick swap board on, um, turn it all on. I uh, went through all the configuration settings that you have to do. I got a few more to do than some of the other motors because I got like a weird, wonky Linux 2.3 version motor or whatever. Um, but other than that, I went pretty damn smooth. I, I'm pretty happy with how, you know, this is coming along. Um, it's a little longer than what I expected. I thought it'd be, you know, in and out, you know, probably an hour or so. But that's with, with any damn project I do. It always seems to take a little while longer. Anyway, I just checked fan operation. It works pretty damn good. I'll show you how I put this board on. So really, uh, the main steps is you really just got to mount the board. And then take, uh, this is the 5-pin or 6-pin or whatever. Yeah, 5-pin. And this is the 16 pin. You just take that off your old motor and then plug it in a new board. And then you got your taps right here for your different motor speeds and then your common. And then I mounted the, the capacitor right back there on the blower wheel. And that's really it. I mean, this quick swap board, it came with like a little mounting bracket. So I drilled a couple holes there so I can screw it in right there. And then I drilled a couple holes for the capacitor. That's it, it's going super smooth. I'm gonna put this thing back together and we'll turn the heat back on. All right, well, it's been several hours now. I think I finished the job right around three or four o'clock and it's now about 11. The furnace has been running the whole time. It's nice and warm in the house. Everything works great, I'm super happy. Uh, quick products for the win on this one. Um, I recommend it, you know, I mean, if you, if you have one of these motors and you need to swap it out, or you know you have one of these motors and you, you're just kind of dreading the day when, it, when it's gonna happen, just go ahead, you know, make the, make the swap. Um, actually, really, my only complaint would be you can just kind of hear it start up a little more than the last one, because the, the old motor just kind of ramped up nice and slow, which was kind of nice, but uh, this one, you know, just kind of hear it dull, just kind of comes on like that, you know, which isn't bad, I kind of expected that, you know, from the beginning. But anyway, everything's running smooth. Uh, quick products, you know. I don't know why furnace people don't use this shit, you know, to be honest with you. Because I literally watched a YouTube video uh, that just got posted a couple days ago while I was eating dinner tonight. And it was on the exact same damn furnace uh, that I have. And this, this, and this guy's been doing this crap for like 30 years or whatever. And he just kind of fabric cobbled some PSC motor in there to where the fans just run constantly 100 percent of the damn time so i'm glad i did this because i don't want to end up in that situation you know where i'm at the mercy of some havac tech so yeah you know the the board's a little pricey 300 bucks but you know i'll pay that and the instructions are great i actually got them here on the counter i'll show you i don't know if i showed you previously but um, the instructions are pretty decent maybe this uh big paper here and then they give you this little, little quick quick guide. Um, they show the different styles of, of motors you got. And I actually have this one here. I have a Linux. And it's just like 2.0, 2.3. So because of that, I had to do a couple of extra steps here. I think I had to, when I got here, I had to come over here and do this Appendix 2. And come down here and do this uh, Appendix 3. No, yeah, that one right there. And then they got more instructions on the back, just kind of simplify it. But yeah, anyway, it's just, you know, a couple connections. I plugged in there, I plugged in there. And then your motor taps are on the side. Or no, they're right here. Yeah, but sorry. But yeah, the motor taps are right there. Really pretty simple. I mean, if, if you hammer down on it, you can probably get in and out of there in about an hour. I mean, you could zip tie the capacitor you know, someplace and, you know, just get kind of in and out. So, I mean, I wouldn't be afraid of the project, you know. So, uh, anyway, I'm going to wrap it up here. And I hope this helps someone out, you know, because it, I'm definitely excited. I definitely got peace of mind. And I feel a lot better now. So, with that said, until next time, we'll see you.